Welcome to the Oxen Group Nightly. My name is Dave Ristow. I'm the CEO, President, and Founder of the Oxen Group. The Oxen Group is a financial analysis and investment newsletter website located at www.theoxengroup.com. <clears throat> in tonight's Oxen Group Nightly, we'll be talking about our recap of August 1st in the market. We'll be looking at how the market did today as well as recapping some of our new and current positions and um, also we'll be looking at some of our other um, portfolios including Georgia's Corner. The extended value portfolio and as always our financial report on the dollar and cents. Uh, we'll be looking at our forecast for tomorrow and as always please check out our disclaimer at the end of the video. Excuse me, uh, the market you had another down day in the red uh, makes the seventh straight day. Um, tried to get out some gains at the end of the day um, but could not. Um, it was a pretty much a crazy day in the market. There's no real better way to explain it. Started out the day uh, up about 130 points and then moved down um, at the low of the day, down about 130 points. Um, that happened only about an hour after we were up at 130 points. And then sort of the rest of the day kind of lingered around, slowly ticking up and up and up after about the lunchtime um, area and uh, end of the day almost flat pretty much. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a tough day in the market. You got on one side, you had, you know, the debt ceiling crisis, you know, looking like it's going to be solved and, you know, some, but then CBO comes out and says basically they're not going to cut as much spending as they thought they were. Um, and it's not going to even be initial cuts. It's going to be another six months of this task force trying to find other places to cut spending. Um, and so really at the end of the day, they really didn't do that much. And then on the other side of things, you got this IMS index comes out um, at 10 a.m. today on Eastern Time. It shows an a drop of to 50.9 from the expectations at 54. Um, now those expectations were ridiculously high, um, basically expecting a neutral to gain over our last ISM index, and um, you know that was a little, I think, a little bit too aggressive. Um, uh, on the good side, though, construction spending did rise in June of what, to 02 percent over May, and that was better than the expectations that were supposed to be flat. Um, but here you see the ISM index and how it's been doing, and uh, basically, you know. It's been dropping. Um, we did get a nice little pop, um, you know, from the from the last low, and but we've basically dipped right back to where we were last summer. Now the hope is that you know that okay we've dipped to this part in the last part, you know, this last summer, and now we did it again, and you know the economy's still sluggish, and we're not you know um, obviously rip roaring like we were back in you know '03, let's say, but overall the manufacturing is better than it was in 08 and it's even better than it was in 07 and um, as long as this is a short term thing uh, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, who knows if it will be um, but, but and I think you also need to think about the manufacturing side of things you know the American economy is not built on manufacturing anymore it's built on the services in my opinion and I think that you know this well this is definitely impactful and definitely very important that it holds that 50 line um, you know, I think that there are we can still have a very strong economy with the manufacturing index being neutral. Um, but we did see a pretty good whipsaw off that um, the news. You know, you see right here we were kind of losing a little bit of the gains. Okay, I was kind of expected we'd sell off off the open, but then this ISM index comes out and boom, it drops us, and then we get another pretty big drop for the next about hour and a half. Um, but once we hit lunch, we sort of started to tick up and sort of rallied around. Um, you know, the debt crisis, you know, the vote's supposed to be tonight. We had a pretty bullish um, press conference from the Republicans saying, you know, basically all the leadership is behind it. And that should f hopefully follow suit for the rest of the groups. And they should vote it a, a passage of that, solve that crisis. We move on to the next one. Um, and maybe we can start to refocus on earnings and things like that. Um, we were a little bit maybe aggressive. <laughs> A little aggressive, and that was probably a mistake on my part. But um, I wanted to get into Norfolk Southern today. I really like this company a lot. I think it's a real great stock. It's got a good price channel to the upside. It's right at the bottom of it. Uh, it's holding that 20-day moving average. Things are moving to the upside. They had outstanding earnings, record revenue, record net incomes, um, and they haven't really rallied off of it yet um, with a lot of pressure from the market. Um, we got the news today. You know, we bought in at the open uh, at 76.50. Um, we only took a half position though because you know I did expect sort of a sell-off to the upside, but I wanted to get a position locked in just in case we rallied off of it. 
Um, then we started to move back down, and uh, at some points of the day we were looking pretty weak on it, but it did hold the 20-day moving average and that, that uh, price channel at the close. Um, and we'll look to uh, enter another half position there when we see um, some upside from this level. Um, probably actually won't oh, to enter another half position until we see maybe a pullback uh, again uh, to that below that $75 line, or if we do break that $76.50 line and move higher. Um, you know, we're, we're pretty much range bound right now, and it's okay for us to be down a little bit given how volatile this market is at any moment that could jump to 77 to 78, um, and at the same time could fall below the 74 line. Um, we also, uh, on the options side today, we took a, a bull put spread on Apple, the 380, 360 bull put spread, uh, pretty big spread, um, but you know. Uh, the spread allows us to take three hundred and basically twenty five dollars premium per uh, spread um, and you risk only about twenty five hundred dollars to get that spread um, and that's a pretty good um, you know uh, amount of return for investment that's all you know about a fifteen percent return on investment which is not not bad at all um, and that's a nice and that Basically, Apple just needs to hold 380 by August 20th for it to expire completely worth it and for you to take the entire premium away. Um, and, you know, what's also great about it is if we do get any real sharp downward movements from here, uh, we can cover the one leg on it on the 360 side and then hopefully wait for the, the 380 to hold um, on any, you know, if we can hold 380. You know, I'm basically saying if we move down to 380, we could cover the 360 and then take the 380 naked basically and as long as it holds 380 which it should um, by 20 by the August 20th then we're good on that part um, but hopefully we can just keep the spread open the spread open and this will hold about 385 um, before that date and we can get some more rallying even on top of where it is right now um, other than that uh, we did real well on a long call on oil this morning uh, most of our clients got out um, right at the open for about a four to five percent gain on UCO um, we took most of the position off there, but then we uh, didn't. Did, we wanted to keep some of it open, uh, hoping that you know that oil could continue higher um, off the deal, um, and that kind of backlashed on us as that really fell apart intraday. Uh, a huge move on oil intraday that really was just you know emulated the rest of the market and really couldn't do much about that. Um, but we did average out with a gain on that. Um, though it was slighter than the 4.5%. Um, we also have sold puts on Lulu and Las Vegas Sands. You know, basically my strategy right now is uh, I think at any moment we can go up really big in this market. I, I know that's probably not a, a popular decision. I think a lot of people think, you know, okay, well, you know, even if we get a deal, you know, how good can it be? And, you know, I look at these company earnings and across the board and I say, these are pretty freaking good earnings. You know, we've gotten really nice revenue increases. Uh, we got a lot of EPS beats. We've got a lot of good guidance going forward. A lot of solid guidance that I think is better than what people would expect given the market conditions out there. And I don't think that's really getting priced into a lot of these companies. You know, you got companies like Las Vegas Sands and uh, Norfolk Southern, which we're long on, that have had that had really, really great, you know, record margins for Las Vegas Sands, record revenue, record income for Norfolk Southern, and the stock prices have basically been bleh, you know, and it's one thing to say that that was priced into the stock because I don't really think it was. When you look at a company like Norfolk Southern, they're operating at an, a, a price to earnings ratio of about 16, you know, which is right at industry average and, and below market average. And you know, this is a company that's showing really good, strong growth, uh, continues to guide well. They, they, they have got really great positioning on margins and cash and everything looks very solid for them. And so to say that they should be declining at all based on you know, movement in Washington is just a sham. And so, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to be able to find ways to make money on these really solid companies without having to be completely long. And so what we've done is we sold some puts on Lululemon and Las Vegas Sands. And basically these, these will be income makers for us as long as those companies, which are doing great and are continue to show support even on down days, as long as they can hold certain levels. So for Lululemon, we're looking for it to hold a $55 level and for Las Vegas Sands, the $43 level. Both those look very uh very capable. We'll make about $200, $300 of income on those if they can just hold those levels. And, <clears throat> you know, in a time when the market really is, shows a lot of uncertainty, it's good to see some just some income coming into your account, some nice cash coming into your account. Um, for Georgia's Corner, this is a uh, vertical put spread um, uh, options portfolio run by our lead 
trader there, Giorgio Ferrero, and he only has one open position right now in FXC. Um, he did, however, say that he likes Cheng Yu and Starbucks or plays from here, and he is looking for entries on those. Uh, we didn't have anything new from dollar and cents today, and on the extended value portfolio, uh, the beverage equity analytics is should be released sometime midweek. Uh, for tomorrow, uh, I think the market really revolves around the House and Senate vote tonight. Um, if they can get it passed in the House, that'll be a great rallying point uh, for the market, at least for the open. Um, the Senate continues there. Um, Moody's basically saying today, we're not going to downgrowth the USA if we can get this debt ceiling passed. I think S and P. I think is that um, S and P will and Fitch will follow suit and not downgrade the USA, which is a rallying point. There, we move away from the debt ceiling and we can then focus on things like company earnings. Um, and then on the flip side, we can focus on uh, GDP and jobs. And I think you know, as we can get some focus on company earnings for you know that's been overshadowed with the debt ceiling, I think that should be a positive rallying point. Uh, we also have personal income and personal spending tomorrow, as well as auto sales. Um, if those are good. Those are great rallying points. And then we have a list of earnings, uh, uh, not definitely not market movers, but do have impact in their own different industries. Archer Daniels, Mid Archer Daniels Midland, Coach, Emerson. I'm um, sorry, that's supposed to be Marathon. Um, that says Marriott. And then um, TAP, uh, Molson Coors. Um, so all can really move their different industries. Um, and have a big impact in those which then can help the market overall. That's going to do it for today. This is at www.theoxygroup.com. Email us, call us, become a part of our 70% plus accuracy.